What's, What's up, up guys? guys? On this week's show, cocaine is a hell of a drug. Grungy vampires. And Mike hates Quentin Tarantino. All that and more on this episode of One Giant Leap for Geeks. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for Geeks. Welcome to another episode of OGLFG, where we talk about movies, video games, and all things in geek culture. I'm your host, Mike C. Squared, and with me is my co-host, DJ Melly Mel. Hey! Now, before we get started, uh, I want to let you know, if you enjoy the show, tell some friends about us, share us on your social media, whatever you choose to do, just know that you're helping us let others know about the best damn podcast they've probably never heard of. Now, if you want to talk to us, the show is on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks, and you can get a hold of our resident DJ Melly Mel at Froggy Beaver. Girl, what you been doing? Okay, so I got a chance to go to a bridal wedding expo this weekend. Mm-hmm. I had a blast. Um, my mom and me and my maid of honor, we went out to this expo thing, and we were the first ones there. Mm-hmm. So we got entry to the breakfast, like the it's brunch, the Sunday brunch offered by the Frankenmuth Lodge, mm-hmm. Bavarian Lodge, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was real excited about that. Mm-hmm. So we get in, and we get this fancy ass breakfast. We see the sign. It says $25 a person. So we got $75 worth of breakfast for free. Wow. Wow. And then my maid, my maid of honor got herself a $5 mimosa in a giant, like, huge-ass wine glass. Nice. Nice. And so, Like in a big-ass thermos. Yeah, yeah. It, this thing was huge. <laughs> and uh, she's walking around. She's got this mimosa. And we saw dresses. And we tasted some funky ass cupcakes and got ideas for centerpieces Mm -hmm. because she is also getting married two Mm -hmm. weeks after t money and i okay so So you kind of like kill two birds yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm in her wedding she's in mine kind of thing nice and uh we just had a blast we spent like four hours there Mm -hmm. and we didn't spend any money nice it was all free i mean the ten dollar tip that we left the waitress but that was it sure we just got 75 dollars worth of food free so i figured we could give her well, we gave her 10 and my mom gave her 10, so 20. Now, is this your first experience with brunch? Uh, no, it's just my first experience with a bridal show. Okay, okay. I've never had brunch. Brunch. It, it was it was nice. The food was really good. They had, like, cocktail desserts and they had Did olives it, and pickles and fruit. and. So is it is it lunch food? Is it breakfast both. food? There was like scrambled eggs and waffles and bacon, and then you had like ham and roast beef and hash and uh, buttered you, Frankenmuth butter noodles. They have like waffles and pancakes. Waffles and pancakes and chicken. And was was there crepes? Uh, I didn't see any crepes. Oh boo! But there might have been. I don't cinnamon rolls or um, biscuits. The, yeah, there was like the little scones and the little um, pastry things. Okay, okay. And then there was lots of fruit. Making me hungry. And uh, cottage <laughs> cheese, and oh my god, it was just okay, okay. Amount un ungodly amount of food, and it was <laughs> great. And we got to sit um, poolside actually because nice. they have an indoor pool, uh-huh. and the breakfast room is like overlooking the pool. Okay, so we got to sit poolside and enjoy our brunch, mm-hmm. and then um, my maid of honor actually won a like. $75 off of a DJ or $100 off of a DJ or something. Well, like a raffle or something? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Every, okay. You know, every little vendor we went to, you would put your name in, and she, they pulled her name, so that was cool. And we both won uh, $100 off of our wedding dresses if we go to this one particular boutique in Frankenmuth. Sure. So I was like, that's cool. Right, right. You know, any little bit will help. I'm and, sure, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I was like, a uh, 100 bucks. <laughs> I don't know how far that'll go, but... Well, I mean... The dress that I'm looking at is only two fifty. So, oh, okay. If hundred bucks off, hundred fifty dollars for my wedding dress is pretty damn good. That's really damn good. Yeah. Yeah. So that was our Sunday, and then uh, after that we went home, and T Money and I had orchestrated a surprise birthday party for Sexy Lexi. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Saturday was her birthday. Mm-hmm. 
And she's never had a surprise party, so okay. we orchestrated one and got her a cake and balloons. And Ooh, What kind of cake? It was a cookie cake, like a giant chocolate chip cookie oh, okay, with frosting. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. And then, okay, I've seen um, those, yeah. We got her some Spider-Man balloons and nice. de- decked up the house and got those little confetti popper things and we shot them at her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then uh, T-Money barbecued some hot dogs, so it nice, was good. Nice. It was good. Good. She had a fun time. Good. She could not be here tonight, unfortunately. Totally understand. Yeah. But I'm glad to hear that she had a good time. Yeah. I was working that weekend, and then it was, I think it was Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I had to be at work at 8 a.m. on Monday, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. She had fun, and she didn't well, expect it. And Okay. Good. Good. She loved all her, her presents. We got her these little figure, like the Hopco or Funco. The Funco. Funco, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. the little... Bobblehead guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got her uh, Quint and Matt Hooper from Jaws. Nice. She's a big shark fan. Nice, nice. So that was pretty neat. And then she got some new uh, DC shoes. Okay. And then um, a fishing pole. Nice. So, nice. It was pretty exciting. Well, my week was definitely nowhere near as exciting as that. Um <laughs> I, you seem to say that every week. No, like, I know it's it's on. pretty boring. My life's pretty boring. Nah, uh, I uh, it's got to be because I got time to do this. If I was doing exciting shit, I wouldn't be sitting here <laughs> talking into a microphone. <laughs> At least you're not talking to yourself anymore. Yeah, that is true. Uh, no, I I survived the blizzard of 2020. Um, no, there was no blizzard. It was, it, we, we did have an ice storm. Yeah, what, uh, like an inch and a half? Yeah, yeah. It's, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty rough in some areas. We lost power a couple times for a bit, not for a sustained amount of time, uh, for a bit, but not like hours and hours on end. Mm-hmm. Uh, the internet went out a couple times. Uh, the roads were icy as shit. There was like tons of accidents on the expressway, so it it was pretty dangerous in some parts. Um, See, we never lost power. Yeah, it flickered once, but not enough to knock all the clocks out. Okay, yeah, no, ours ours went out a couple times. Um, like I said, not for like long time, like hour twenty minutes, you know, something okay. like that. Not you know like half the day or a week sure. or something crazy because sure. there was one time where we were out of power for like a good solid day. So it's not like the snowstorm of 2019. No, 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 not even close. Uh, we uh my my work we closed up early uh because we were like so dead. I mean I'm talking like we opened at 10 a.m. by two o'clock. Mm-hmm. We had been open for four hours. I hadn't had a single sale the whole day. Good God, in yeah. four hours? Yeah, so we went ahead and shut it down. And then the mall itself closed at like 6 p.m., like four hours after we closed. Damn. But I was like, man, I'm not going to stay up here until 6 o'clock and then close the mall. I'm like, no. Because we were staying up until 9 that day. And uh, it was like, it, they should have been closed by like 3, 4 o'clock, to be honest. Because like really? our, our anchor stores were even closed in the mall. And it was like, what? why are we even here? Right. But no, other than that, um, nothing too exciting. Um, I am going to be coming up here soon on my vacation uh, Saturday. All Starts right. my two-week vacation, so I will have a lot of free time on my hands. I got a bunch of stuff that I've been meaning to get done for a while that I'm going to try and work on. Ooh, you know what we could do? What's that? Since you're going on vacation mm-hmm. and I have the weekends off mm-hmm. and there's like a week and a half until tea money and I have to do something drastic, mm-hmm. we should rent Joker. Okay. And watch Joker. Okay. Just for the hell of it. Okay. Haven't you already seen it though? I have, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I should rent Joker. <laughs> and watch Joker. I was like, I'm I'm not necessarily looking forward to watching it again. No. But I'm No, like, I won't right. put you through that torture. No. I forgot no. that you No like you, I said, you there, and A Train already yeah, there are watched aspects, it and reviewed it. So. Yeah, there are aspects of it that I did enjoy, but there are a lot of aspects of it that I thoroughly did not enjoy. Um, you know, um, they they announced the Oscar nominations Monday as well, and it has eleven Oscar nominations. Really, eleven from the trailers and your review. I don't. 
I mean, look, okay. I, the people. I, I've I've gone back and forth with people on Twitter about. I was saying, it. I don't mm. watch review shows yeah. for that specific reason. So. <clears throat> no, it, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I I don't take anything away from someone like in a movie. It wasn't my cup of tea per se. Mm. Uh, but hey, if you liked it, by all means, go ahead. But you know, I, I've said it before. Like, I don't need an award to validate. You know, if whether or not I think something is good, you right. know, I'm like, hey, if I like it, that's all I need. I don't need somebody else to be like, it's officially good. So new <laughs> plan. Maybe we should go see a movie that we haven't seen. Um, Bad Hopefully. Boys for Life would be out that by is that true. point. Um, and uh, Doolittle will also be out by that point. Uh, so. Bad Boys it is. <laughs> but anyway, we, we're, we're getting sidetracked. Okay. Always. We all always right. do. All right. Moving on. You do need that validation and you know it. You hate that Joker is nominated for 11 Academy Awards. And you're scared it's going to win too. Aren't you? You bet to cook snowflake. It's that time again for America's number one show, Dumb Shit of the Week. That's right, Dumb Shit of the Week is a show where DJ Millie Mel finds dumb shit and we talk about it. Want your submission on the show? Find us on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks, or you can send us an email at officialoglfg at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, DJ Melly Mel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so this week's dumb shit really isn't dumb per se it's more more along the lines of why um apparently the golden girls are making a comeback so what i mean is for those of you who do know the golden girls is a show about four little old ladies living in miami florida Thank you for being a um, Great show. Real witty. I love it. Clearly Mike does too. And uh, this this lady... Wait, so wait. Now, come back. Um, uh, these... Some of these women aren't still alive. The what? only one that is still alive is Betty White. Okay. The other three are already passed. Um, is she... She's not coming back for no, the show, No, no, no. Right? It's not like a, a reboot or anything like that. Although I did well, see... Well, no. It is a reboot. No. Right? Okay. So explain. Okay. Okay. What um, do you mean they're coming back? They are coming back in the form of fashion. Oh. oh what? Um, <laughs> I have done a, a quite an extensive look, and Golden Girls shirts uh -huh. have been very popular. Um, I've seen Golden Girls socks. I've seen Golden Girls pillowcases, jackets. Basically, somebody decided it was going to be a good idea to put the Golden Girls on everything. Start cranking out Golden Girls merch? Yeah, Golden Girls merch. And uh, okay. Candice Perot in from Utah is no different. She has created Golden Girls panties. Okay. And it uh, is right. a four-pack set of granny panties. Like... <laughs> The ones that come up to your nipples. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'll, with, I'm liking where this is going with so the far. the faces of the Golden Girls on them. Oh, in the crotch or the butt? It looks like it's in the crotch. Okay, good. <laughs> but I mean, with Thank the with the granny the panties, brand. it's hard to tell. You can't really da, da, da. tell. If oh, and it's gonna be just like front. risky business. They all gonna come out and and in their underwear and shit, and it's gonna be the Golden Girls underwear. And instead of um singing old time rock and roll, uh -huh. they're gonna be singing. Uh, Thank you for being, being yep. a friend. Da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she started making them and selling them on Etsy, and they're like selling like hotcakes. That's crazy. So now, now wait a minute. Now, see, this is this is the thing that I got in trouble for okay. when, when I was trying to do merch for our podcast. Okay, is using the likeness of a celebrity without their consent or permission. So, I mean, how did this woman? How is she selling this and not? like being sued or stopped by somebody um i'm not i'm not sure they never tell you no I mean, it they didn't, never explain the inner workings it of didn't explain it but it did let show me 
I just want to see the the panties themselves. Yeah, they're oh nice. <laughs> the only ones that are semi sexy are Blanche's, and that's for obvious reasons. They're like yeah, yellow so, and black lace. Okay, yeah. So I mean, it's not like she didn't even like. No, um, she straight up took pictures of like, yeah, from the show. Like, like yeah, like like like, like went to like Google Images. And, like, looked up their characters and just, like, took that and just pasted it on there. Like, I'm yeah. thinking it's, like, a nope, nope, a uh, caricature nope, of the girls nope, or nope. something like that. Like, no, it's just a picture with, like, colored background. a colored background and everything yep. else is a different color than the panties. That's hilarious. And people are buying them. People like, are buying them. Like I mean, the panties right. are, are pretty sexy. I mean, I, I I'll give, I mean, if you love you some granny panties, uh, then. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> like I said, the only ones that are semi-sexy are Blanche's and they're yellow and black lace. And uh, that's probably for obvious reasons. Because if you've seen the show, you know that Blanche was the slutty one. And I'm Oh, the lace part. Okay. I was like, why yellow and yep. black? But okay, the lace. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Thank you so for being a slut. She also has panties with uh, Bob <laughs> Ross on them. What the fuck? <laughs> why would you want panties with a picture... So is it because they're dead? Is that why she can do that? Maybe, maybe no. Because this Betty one has, White, yeah, it's still this alive. one has Ryan Gosling and cats. I don't know how she's getting away with these. What? <laughs> I drew a a a a a a picture in 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 Paint dot net of Keanu Reeves from that um Be My Always Maybe movie where he's doing the little like shrugging meme thing and i totally got in trouble for that but this is this is fine this is not even like i I don't know this is blatant like i just went copy image and pasted it onto the design and printed it off on some panties yeah apparently that's okay what's her name uh candace she white (laughs) (laughs) never mind i know what it is now no it's all good pura e-u-g-h Pug? Mm, pug. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Candace somebody. Well, you found a way to work the system, Candace. Good job. I ain't even gonna hate on you. <laughs> but you don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> I guess. So uh, the this week's dumb shit lesson is you gotta be a white person if you mm-hmm. wanna try to get away with copyright images. Yep, yep, yep. If Got you wanna it. be successful. Don't mm. be racist, kids. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That's it. That's all I got. Um... I know, kind of lame this week. Francine's going to rip into me. I know she is. She has been last couple weeks. I think she's like secretly taking a stab at me. I was going to say last week. No, I I think it was pretty tame. I think. I don't remember. I don't know. I I know the week before that was pretty rough. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) The week before that. (laughs) Shots fired there, let me tell you. But, uh, so if you have a, a suggestion for dumb shit... I am always taking suggestions. You can send it to me at Froggy Beaver on Twitter. You can send it to the show at Giant Leap the Number Four Geeks, or you can email it to us at officialoglfg at gmail dot com. Um, if you want to send it to the show on Facebook, that might be an option too. We'll see. Uh, anyways, so the moral of the story is: stay smart, kids. Have a good night. Golden Girls, Granny Panties, whatever. Call me when they start making Burt Reynolds thongs. <sighs> well, oh, Mel. Yes. The time is upon us. Uh-oh. Uh oh. We have finally got our first trailer for Morbius, and it's a thing. <sighs> it is a God. thing. Um. Okay. Look, I, I, I don't, I don't hate it on its own. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. There's only it, one thing that I really hate about it. What's that? The damn part where they tell you who produced it. Okay. So, we, all right, we're we're gonna get there. So, um. I think the thing, the trailer on its own is is whatever. It's generic, but it's fine. The thing that is bothering me are the connections that they're making to the MCU. Mm-hmm. That's what's killing me. So, mm-hmm. at the very start of the trailer, they pull some shit out of their ass that 
angered me so much. So at the start of the trailer, they go and say they had the audacity, the audacity to say from the studio that brought you Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and Venom. Now, no, bitch, you made Venom, period. Marvel made Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. You distributed those two Spider-Man movies. Marvel called the shots on the script, the casting, the director, the costume design, all of that shit. Like, when they were having that custody battle Uh over Spider-Man and they were pulling him out of the MCU, they wouldn't have been able to use that Spider-Man suit that he was using in the first two movies because... That's Stark tech, so he can't use that because they right. can't reference that shit. Right. Um, anything that happened uh, with with the Vulture and him working to do cleanup after the Avengers fight mm-hmm. in New York, they can't reference none of that shit. It's like the Infinity War, Civil War, all that shit, the dusting, the snap, none of that. They can't even act like any of that shit had happened. So it's like, and the director was not going to be coming back because he was a Marvel hire. Mm-hmm. And so the only thing is, it's like, he Marvel chose Tom, but he has a contract with Sony. Right. So it's like he can't, you know, just be like, oh, what is that? And the other, but all the creative decisions were done by Marvel. I so say, for I them, think they did it on purpose. If I was Marvel, mm-hmm. I'd have done it on purpose. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, hey, you pull him out. You ain't got no story to tell because everything we did, his last villain, Mysterio, we set that shit up that he worked for Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. So it's like... It, the, the the glasses and the drones and all that shit were controlled by Tony, so it was like or Stark Tech. So yep. yeah, they 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 embedded him so deep into the MCU. They was like, if you pull him out, I don't know what the fuck you gonna do to try and just explain away you all that call other Andrew shit. Andrew Garfield, right? They <laughs> get Tobey Maguire ass back, right? But so so they they started off on a bad foot with me because I'm like, don't don't sit here and try and take credit for those movies, yeah. And it's like in association with Marvel, and it's like, don't no don't. Don't don't try and trick motherfuckers to think like, oh yeah, this is a Marvel movie. No, it's not. This is a Marvel character, but is it technically a Marvel movie now? Even like, now well, that from it's the connections that they Fox? make, and well, no, 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 Sony still has this shit. Okay, yeah, Sony has Morbius and I Venom this and all was that Fox shit. No, 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 no. Um, then the other thing that they had did, um, uh, after that is they. Went and there's a shot where you see Morbius um uh walking like down an alley or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um and then he walks past this poster of Spider Man and it has like the spray paint on it with the word uh murderer. And we have at this point officially confirmed that Morbius is more connected to Spider Man than Venom is. Okay. Because we actually see that Spider-Man exists in the world of Morbius, and he, in this movie takes place after Spider-Man: Far From Home because they have the murderer thing spray painted on it because people think that he killed, um, uh, uh, Mysterio and a bunch of other people. They think he's a villain, like he's being framed by Mysterio okay. and shit. Okay, and so this is supposed to take place after that. So, but in Venom, there is no mention of Spider-Man at Not all. At all. So. As far as the, the, the movie universe is concerned, Morbius is more connected to Spider-Man than Venom is. All right. I can go with that. That's... Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's just sad, it's shit is, I know, I know. But, but uh, I can go with it. But to add insult to injury with the, the Spider-Man poster thing, mm-hmm. okay. I guess I missed that in the trailer both times I watched Yeah, that. when he's walking in the alley, he's got like some like blanket around him or some shit and he walks past a poster and it's a poster of spider-man it says murderer on it i'm gonna have to watch it again yeah and he the, but the thing that's 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 so frustrating about it is the poster has spider-man in his costume from the sam raimi spider-man movies so it's not even like the current spider-man like, not from Civil War or Infinity War with the mm-hmm. Iron Man, like, arms yeah, and all that yeah, shit. Yeah. Or even the black and red one from Homecoming, or Far From Home. Yeah. It's the one from the 2000 movies. And then, not only that, it's not even an image from, like, the current movies with him in the old costume. It's from the fucking PS4 game. It's from one of the loading screens from the Spider-Man PS4 game. Wow. And, and one of the, the, the DLCs, one of the updates, 
gave you the Spider-Man costume from the Sam Raimi movies because people were complaining that that wasn't a costume choice, and then they finally put it out, and it's that same pose and everything. Like, motherfuckers put it side by side on Twitter, and I'm like, oh my god. Like, you, they couldn't even be bothered to, like, Photoshop a, a picture of Tom Holland in the old Spider-Man costume. They just took it from the game and just spray painted murderer over it. I'm like, oh wow. My God. So it, it, they they already cutting corners and being cheap and shit. And I'm like, oh my fucking god! Like, are you serious right now? So I knew that you were gonna go off on this. Yeah, it's, like when you mm-hmm. sent me this trailer mm-hmm. and at the top the caption just said. <sighs> yep, so, just just sigh. Yep, yep. And I was like, "Oh hell, this is gonna yep, be good." Yep. Oh, oh, and and finally, and and finally, um, J.K. Simmons is in the cast, and he's going to be having a cameo as J. Jonah Jameson, further cementing the fact that this is a part of the Spider-Man MCU universe because J. Jonah Jameson shows up at the end of Far From Home, uh-huh. and so he's going to be in this as well. So it's like. They they making sure you know yes this shit is connected to Spider Man like we is not bullshit no more. Well, and, they fucked up with Venom, mm-hmm. and, and now they gotta fix it. And <sighs> the very end of the trailer, mm-hmm. you see Michael Keaton's Vulture from yeah. Spider Man Homecoming yep. talking to Michael Morbius, and I'm like, yep, yep, that's it. That it's it's you now at this point it's totally can't be denied this is a part of the MCU or at least the Spider-Man movies we've seen in the MCU so mm-hmm. far. So yeah, so that means that unfortunately Venom is eventually going to be wrapped into the MCU just like Morbius is and Craven the Hunter and when they make a fucking Doctor Octopus movie and a the Lizard movie and yeah. a Hobgoblin movie and a Green Goblin movie and who else are we going to make a movie? A Hydro Man. Sandman gets a movie. Say, gotta throw the Sandman in there. Who, who, what, what other Spider-Man rogue are we going to get to get a, a movie? Uh, um, what's that one dude? The Chameleon gets a movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you the, feel like Oprah yet? You get a movie. Right, you right. get a movie. There's that one dude that makes like little portals and shit. Uh, he gets one. Kingpin gets a movie. With King, I would watch that. I'd actually. watch that too. <laughs> That'd be a badass movie. I was like, you know what? Never mind. But yeah. but <laughs> I retract my previous statement. But the cool thing about the fact that Michael Keaton is in this, though, and this is what I was saying when we were watching the trailer again mm-hmm. right before we started recording. Mm-hmm. Do you realize the fact that Jared Leto and Michael Keaton are both in this movie that technically we have the Joker and Batman in this movie? I did. Yeah. I noticed that when yeah. I saw Michael Keaton and I was like, oh, it's I like see what you did there. My favorite Batman coupled with my least favorite Joker. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I think I just I think it's funny because DC is struggling, uh huh, and struggling hard, uh-huh. and Marvel has yet somehow. Okay, Marvel and Sony because mm-hmm. we've already established this isn't Marvel, but it is. Yeah, um, right. Marvel and Sony have found a way to take. Two of the DC icons, Mm -hmm. both for different reasons. Um, Like you said, Keaton, greatest Batman, and Mm -hmm. Joker, which is Jared Leto, and bring them over to the red side. (laughs) And Yeah, because people have said, and I support it too, I mean, we've even said on this podcast, Mm -hmm. if they made a um, a Batman Beyond movie and made Michael Keaton old Bruce Wayne, I would give them all the money. Yep. (laughs) Like, I I don't even know why they are not doing that right now. Like, how you are backing up dump trucks of money in front of Michael Keaton's house right now is beyond I want to say that would be the only way that Batman would make sense right now. And it could have been so dope, because then then I wouldn't have even been bothered by the fact that they made Robert Pattinson Batman, because then they could be like, no, he's the Batman beyond Batman. I'd been okay with that. And then Michael Keaton's the old school Bruce Batman. I would have been uh, totally sold on that shit. Anyway, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh... Like it or not, we've got Morbius. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen poster art for mm-hmm. Venom 2. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. I sent it to you. Did you not? No, no, no. I haven't seen okay, it Okay, no, I'm going to no, have no. to go back and find it and resend it to you. Okay. Uh, It's apparently a list of movies coming out in 2020. Okay. And it's Venom 2, 
Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because Venom did come out in 2018. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense, yep. That'd be and from what year. the... So, we're going to get Morbius and Venom this year? That's what I'm hearing on Jesus the dark webs. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, Stork is, like, doing a backflip right I'm now. Sure. I know it. I know it. I can hear him, like, laughing right I now. I think it's supposed to come out in, like, later this year. Oh, so no. November, December area, somewhere in there. But... The poster art is just. I there there is there is a thing though in this though that I, I did like like I don't want to completely shit on this I, I did like the scene where he's going to collect the bats and he cuts his hand to draw them out yeah um the the one thing that didn't make sense to me though was like the fact that why would a man in his condition like that's like barely like able to walk. Without like crutches and he's he's like pale and skinny as hell and spines all fucked up, it's like why would you need to actually be there to do that? Like, couldn't have he just like paid one of them mercenary dudes to cut their hand and make the bats come out the cave? Um, or sent them with like a vial of his blood or some shit and was like, hey, just cut this open and throw it out there and they'll come out and you know just catch him. Because some people were saying, like, oh, that's how he transforms into Morbius. I'm like, no, no, he injects himself with some kind of potion formula shit he makes. I'm like, no, he's just collecting the bats in that scene. Because when he's walking up to it, there's, like, this cage thing that comes up. He cuts his hand, and he puts his hand in front of it. And as the bats are flying through, some of them are getting caught inside of that. Right. Um, But I, I did think that that was cool. I thought it was dumb that he needed to be the one to do it. But I was like, eh, that's that's a cool little thing. And I, I did like how they were explaining how his powers worked with the, you know, enhanced strength and senses and the echolocation and visually how they represented that I thought looked cool. Um, it was like this kind of smoky, shadowy thing. So, like, when something would make a sound, it would kind of be like radar or like Daredevil or something pretty much. That was kind of cool. Um, I... I don't like the fact that it's so dark. Oh, yeah, no. If that's... Yeah, I'm not... Nah, <laughs> they can keep that. Um, The... Yeah, the, one of my other problems with it is that it's really dark. Like, not in tone, but, like, literally, I could barely tell what I was watching for a good part of the trailer. Um, Also, a lot of what we see in the trailer takes place in a lab, and that scares me because I have a feeling this is going to be like Venom where a lot of the movie is going to take place yeah. in like the same couple locations like the lab his apartment you know you the might have cave. right you might have like one set piece where it's like a car chase or some shit and then we're going to go back to the lab and I'm like I don't want to spend like two hours in the lab I feel like we're going to I would say I made the, the half the joke off mic so now that they've got Michael Keaton in this mm -hmm. and they've got Jared Leto in this mm -hmm. And he cuts his hand, and the bats come. Mm -hmm. Does that technically make the Joker Batman? Oh, my God. Yeah, man bat. Yeah, uh -huh. we'll give him that. Man bat. All right, <laughs> we'll, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll let him have enough. that. We'll let him have that. I, I do feel like Sony felt bold since Disney bought Fox, because I swear they completely ripped off like um, that scene in X-Men 2 where Nightcrawler is yeah, fighting the Yeah, I noticed that shit. Dudes. Yeah. I was like... Because he's, like, in a hallway, and he's, like, jumping yeah. around the walls, and it's doing, like, this smoky thing. I know he's not teleporting. It's supposed to be his echolocation okay, shit. Okay, but it looks like he's teleporting. Yeah, it looks like the Nightcrawler shit. Like, a lot. I'm like, man, look, I better be careful, man. That mouse, and he get on the phone with his lawyers. Yep. Um, I mean, all in all, the trailer is... Okay, it, it mostly it is mostly staying true to his comic book origin stuff. It's just kind of bland overall, and I just really don't like that they're really crowbarring in these connections to the MCU. That's that's my biggest problem. I'm like, just do your Venom verse, man. Like, you don't have to have look. To be fair, there shouldn't be anything with these characters that Spider Man is not directly involved in. But if you're gonna do this, then just make it revolve around Venom. Like, don't make it about Spider Man at all. Like, I mean, if it's... if you made a Venom movie work without Spider Man, and I'm putting in big quotations, work, <laughs> um, then just make Morbius and all that shit connected to Venom. Like, why even bother with Spider Man? I mean, it'd be a simple plot. You made a billion dollars without him, so just. 
that Venom's your new Spider-Man. Do that. Right. <laughs> it would be a simple plot tweak. Exactly. All you got to do is... Because Morbius isn't finna fight Spider-Man in this movie, no. so why even make references to him? You know? It's like, if you're not going to make him his villain... Because I feel like they're still trying to build up that Sinister Six, is what yeah. they're doing. And they're like, we're going to start, you know, making the villains start to meet each other. Because we already got Scorpion and Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. They met each other. Uh-huh. And now Vulture and Morbius them met each other. Uh-huh. And now we got to get Venom in here somehow. Dr. Octopus is going to be right around the corner, I'm sure. So uh, I don't like where this yeah. is. Like, I just got chills. <laughs> <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I like the Sinister Six as a villain group. It's just the way they're doing it. I don't like this. This is not, I don't know. But what do I know? Like I said, Venom made a billion dollars. What do I know? People <laughs> like it. I mean. Right, you hey, hated Venom, so. I I do. That's a well-known fact at this point. I mean, I don't know. Overall, what, are I you mean, excited for this? I mean, I'm not, indifferent? I don't know much about the morbius character i'm not as, and, and that's one thing i will admit to not as most big of, of what i know from him person as is you are. from the spider-man cartoon sure. show sure so in reference to spider-man i mean not so much i don't have anything to go off of mm-hmm. but as far as a movie it looks all right it looks better than a joker movie <sighs> yeah I, I did like I his know. face when they show him as Morbius, like when he yeah, turns yeah, yeah. around and he's got the fangs and he's all white and stuff and his nose is all upturned. I, I thought that looked pretty good. I mean, it looks like it's got potential. Yeah. At least for as far as a cinematic perspective. Yeah. So, <sighs> yeah, I'm not too crazy that it's Jared Leto, but uh, I don't have a throck off for <laughs> I know A-Train's probably all excited. She she likes heard some Jared Leto. Yeah, yeah. Actually, she hasn't seen the trailer yet, so I'm not actually sure what she thinks about it. At okay, this point. okay. But yeah, I mean, I you know, with 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 Venom, because I'm such a big Spider-Man fan and he's so closely connected to Peter, I was a lot more passionate about my anger about that movie. I with, can see that. With this, I'm angry about the MCU connections and how they're crowbarring them in there. Mm-hmm. But as far as everything else, as far as like him as a character and stuff, I am willing f- to let them take a lot of liberties with him that I didn't want to be taken with Venom because I don't have that much investment in the character. Mm, makes sense. So, I mean, and, and I know I'm being a hypocrite, you know, because it's like, well, you know, just because you don't care about him, you know, somebody else may and, you know, you bitching about how they treated Venom and, you know, but as far as I can tell from the Wikipedia research that I did about his character and from what I know about him from the cartoon show, you know, it seems to be, this is pretty much what Morbius is basically supposed to be like. So we'll see. All right, moving on. All right. How dare you? Jared Leto is an Oscar winning actor. He fully transforms and immerses himself into every role he takes. With a high caliber actor like this, how can it not be good? Second, well, it's technically like the third because they had a teaser trailer and then like an official trailer for Birds of Prey. But the official second trailer for Mm -hmm. Birds of Prey is out now. And I laughed my ass off at the very beginning of this shit. Well, not like the very, very beginning when we first see Harley at the uh, police station. Uh And she's like, I must report a terrible crime. And she has that big old like black lady Sunday church hat on (laughs) and shit. Um, Looks like uh, <clears throat> like the Queen of England. What's is some her name shit. from Breakfast at Tiffany's? Oh fuck, um, Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, um, she um, no, it was a scene directly after that. They came out the gate, straight out the gate, and said, "Fuck Jared Leto." <laughs> like, not only did they write him out of the movie, but Harley Quinn has done something that Batman has never been able to do. She killed Kills the him. Joker. Yep. She fucking was in a, a, a chemical truck or some shit and, and drives, jumps out yep, mm-hmm. and lets it ride into the Ace Chemicals plant. And that shit blows up and there's all kind of lights and fire and shit. And I'm like, wow, like, I did not expect that. Like, they said, yeah. fuck Jared Leto Joker. Like, he ain't never. They said, fuck him and Morbius. Like, 
like, <laughs> DC put this shit out on purpose. They said, fuck his Morbius movie. We're going to let you know we killed his bitch ass jerk. Right. Uh, uh, but I <laughs> I did like all the little attention to detail in this trailer, though. Um, they have a scene right after that where she's talking about, um, oh, she's she's embracing her her inner goddess and uh-huh. whatever, but she's crying and pouring a cheese was in her mouth. Uh-huh. She's wearing a pink robe, uh-huh. and the robe has, like, these little faces, they're, but they're hearts, and they all have, like, tears coming out of them and shit, <laughs> and they're all crying. And I was like, that's hilarious. Spencer's already has her merch out for this show, this movie. Oh, yeah, no, I believe it. Well, well the same thing with Suicide Squad was coming out. They already had them Harley Quinn shorts and that like, shirt. We went... um. We were looking for something specific, and we went to Spencer's, mm-hmm. and we ended up not finding what we were looking for, but they have the jacket that she's wearing. Mm-hmm. It's, like, see-through. Oh, and okay. And it looks like a rain jacket. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. They've yep. already got that on sale, front and center in Spencer's, mm-hmm. and I'm like, the movie hasn't even come out yet. Like, we only got a trailer. Hell yeah, they said we got that merch ready, though. Uh, I, I did like another little moment where like, it was just little uh, detailed things that I was like, oh, especially after I watched it the second time Mm -hmm. that I caught was the scene where she is in a warehouse full of cocaine Uh and the dudes are shooting at her and she jumps behind a pallet of cocaine and they're shooting at it and like all the cocaine dust starts coming up and she inhales it and her pupils get all big and shit and she just comes out there she's like ah and just starts like (laughs) killing motherfuckers I was like that was hilarious I like the part where she's like got a moment of psychology or psychological clarity and she just like she's talking to Huntress yeah yeah she starts talking about oh how this is not good for the soul or this that no um, I, I don't remember exactly what she No, she, she goes, she goes, she goes, uh, psychologically speaking, uh, vengeance rarely gives us the catharsis. Right, that we right, look right. For. There you go. <laughs> She's like, are we ready? Yeah, that was pretty funny. Like she has, um, like 10 seconds of, Harlequin, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. bam, back to Harley. Yeah, and I was like, where she's like her back to her actual like psychologist self. Yeah, yeah. I did like, I did like. She's really, I'm, I, I will give her credit. Margot Robbie really did do her due diligence to try and really embrace the character of Harley because she really worked on that Harley accent really, yeah, really she hard because she sounds a lot better in this than she did in Suicide Squad. Like, especially at the beginning when she's like, shit. She was like, what well, is all started when me and Mr. J broke up. And I was like, that was really good. Like, she sounded like Harley right yeah. there. Because in the Suicide Squad, she kind of had that kind of Brooklyn-y accent that Harley not has. So much, but though. not really. But in this, it was, like, thick. Like, I could see her with, like, rollers in her hair and, like, a <laughs> robe. And she's like, and me and Mr. J and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's what Harley sounds like when right. I hear her voice. I think of, like, some, like, middle-aged woman with a cigarette and, like, an iron with rollers in her hair and <laughs> shit. Like, cussing at her husband through the apartment window. Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> right, right. It's like, you piece of shit. Throwing his shit out the window. Uh, you're a bum. I don't know why she's turning into Mick from Rocky all of a sudden. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I'll give her credit. Like, like, she has done a good job of, like, really trying to embrace Harley, though. Uh, I think... Um, it, it's it, it is shocking though that that cocaine scene is in the trailer or in the movie at all because I'm like, I think this is rated R. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm like, you got yeah, I don't know, not a superhero but a uh, anti hero, I guess a vigilante. I don't know what the hell they're trying to make Harley into, but I'm like doing cocaine. <laughs> now she doesn't like go out and do a drug deal and go back to her apartment and like get out a mirror and a razor blade and cut up lines of coke and snort it but she still willingly sniffs the cocaine dust out of the air so i was kind of like oh birds of prey and the uh fantastic emancipation of one harley quinn that's the name of it is that what you're trying to think of no i was gonna look something up and then oh i got distracted and forgot (laughs) so i don't know i guess it wasn't that important uh, we we don't see um, oh, yeah, yeah. as much of uh, Black Mask in this uh, trailer as we did in that last one, uh, which might be a good thing. Uh, I know in the last trailer we saw, I'm pretty sure we both were not too like impressed with Black Mask as a villain. No, not at all. Like, like I like Ewan McGregor as an actor too, which I was kind of bummed. I was like, oh, and like you're kind of, yeah. 
I mean, I don't know what he's going for with the character, but I wasn't all that like, you know, I was I was not too impressed. Uh, we actually do get to see him put on the mask, though, because I that was one of the things I was kind of bummed about in the last trailer that we didn't see Black Mask wearing the black mask. Right. <laughs> he's he's just kind of like, hey, it's me, you and McGregor being crazy. Hey, what's up? I'm a gangster, and I'm like. Yeah, but where where's the black mask though? It's like ah, don't worry about that. We don't need that. <laughs> uh we what else do we see? Um, oh, we got to see Black Canary use her Canary Cry. Yeah, uh, she did her scream and knocked some goons back. Uh, we got to see um Renee Montoya uh running around. Um, Huntress stabbing a dude to death, going down a slide. That was pretty cool. Uh. There is one shot in particular where I think Black Canary she kicks a car door, yeah, into a guy's head, and, yeah, and his head goes through the window. Badass. That was dope as shit. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And um, I like that jacket that Harley had. Which one? Where she had like the sunglasses on and oh, like, the, beginning? The, the blue jacket. When she's like dressed like Aubrey Hepburn. No, 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 no. There's a part in there, and she's got like. It's like got flames on the bottom of it, and it's like blue, and she's got some sunglasses on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When you're in a car, yep, okay, yep, yeah, yep. Uh, that yeah, was pretty yeah, badass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the some... like her outfits are crazy in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. And you know, in the Suicide Squad, we got kind of typical Harley Quinn outfits. You know, we got the the red and blue shorts and the little baby doll tee. And yeah. Then for a split second, we had the red and black Yeah, the outfit, traditional, yeah, from the cartoon. The Jester yeah. cartoon. Mm. And, uh, like, this, this is just weird. Yeah, like she, she she's robbed, just wearing like, a bunch 90s. of just, right, like, like she just fell into somebody's closet and yeah, just yeah, ran yeah, out. Yeah, she yeah. just robbed a bunch of 90s stores. <laughs> she's got all kind of craziness going on. But I like it. It it works for her. So yeah, I and 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 I like this trailer a lot more than the first two that we got. I think this is a lot more fun, and I am having a much better time with this one than I did the last trailer. Oh, like, me too. Because everything I've seen up to this point, I was not like yeah, I was, I was not, not getting impressed. Excited by it. And Harley is not. Harley is actually one of my least favorite Bat villains, mm-hmm. and they had to really sell her hard. For mm-hmm. Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. which I wasn't. Even well, they imp- basically hung that whole movie on her. I really, I really wasn't into her. I yeah. Like you know, I I think she's overhyped. And for this, you know, I'm more open to her being kind of the main focus. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to, you know, like Suicide Squad, she became the main focus, but she wasn't supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Now this, this. I will. I will say that Margot Robbie does a good job. Yeah, yeah. Making me care about a character that I don't care about. That which is a good thing, and and that, and that's saying a lot. And and I think that this group of characters that they chose to pair her with works well to let her be the centerpiece and then be more supporting mm-hmm, characters, mm-hmm. As, as opposed to with Suicide Squad, which besides like maybe I guess you could argue Killer Croc and like Deadshot were like big characters I guess but like for the most part they were all kind of like you know B-list villains and C-list villains or whatever like Captain Boomer and come on now um uh uh what, what's the one do rope guy i don't remember the one who blows his head up like at the very beginning of suicide squad I remember captain boomerang's trying to tell him like oh man like oh, these bombs yeah. like oh it's all bullshit you can just get out of here and he tries to leave and he's the first one to die yeah uh i don't even remember his name yeah me, me neither like i said i would say uh, the diablo guy was pretty important yeah, yeah, but but with, with with Huntress and um Black Canary, though these are bigger characters, mm-hmm. I think that this they're more on an even level. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, because I feel like Harley was not on the same level as say a Deadshot, no. and it didn't really make sense for them to be on the same team together. Um. Oh, and I almost forgot we got the hyenas. We did the one's name Bruce. Yeah, that's was no hilarious. Wayne. No, 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 no. She she said she, she did said his name's Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, yep. she's like uh, she's like oh she's like I call him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy. Yeah, and then he laughs and shit. And I was like oh I tell A Train I was like we need to get a hyena. <laughs> <laughs> I was like then, then we'll have Parker and Wayne. Like come on man, That'd that be would awesome. eat 
Parker. That would totally eat Parker, yeah. Probably y'all. Bray, he would kill everything in this house. I would guarantee it. Especially how big that fucking hyena yeah. is. Or I think the, they get the big. I, man, I think not that big, man. I mean, he's CG. I mean, I don't know if they didn't want to get real hyenas or if they wanted to make them look like Probably the ones a in the cartoon. Hazard. <laughs> yeah, but they're fucking huge. <laughs> I liked it though. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I said, I'm I'm more, I'm much more excited to see this than I thought I would be when they announced they were going to make a Harley Quinn movie, and I'm definitely a hundred and ten percent more excited than I was when I first saw the first few trailers right. for this. Which is a good thing. I mean, finally, DC is finally, you know, starting <laughs> to kind of sort of seem like they're getting their footing and, and kind of get an idea what maybe. they want to do with these movies. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I We still don't know what the whole universe thing is going to be about. Like, is does this, you know, I mean, are we clearly... You know, we're not going back to Justice League and shit, but it's like, is Aquaman and Wonder Woman and all that still connected to Harley in this? Like, is yeah, this connected know. to Joker, the new Batman movie? Like, what is, like, what are we doing, guys? Like, come on, help me out here. But all in all, I mean, I'm I'm willing to give this a chance. Oh, yeah. Much more than I was in the beginning. I still wish that they would pick a different fucking name, because we have, like, the it's longest. It's so long, I, I know. Like we have, like, the longest name ever. Yeah. But, I it's mean, so it's already set in stone, so we really can't do they much I already printed it. the merch. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta sell these fucking stickers. I just call it the Harley Quinn movie. All right, the Harley Quinn show, yeah. That Oh, there you go, the Harley Quinn show. All right, but it's me without Mr. J. <laughs> I killed that motherfucker like goddamn, and she. We had she a mutual did. break. <laughs> right, right. I can't do a Boston uh, Bronx accent. Yeah, I can't do accents very well. Uh, some would say neither can I, so it's uh, okay. <laughs> some, years, some years, pretty good. Some years, pretty good. <laughs> not, not for a lack of trying, though. I just, I don't know. I can't sound different than myself. You're so true to yourself, you can't sound right, different. Right, right, Like, right. That, that's me, DJ Melly Mill. Like, right, that's that's what you get. That's, that's <laughs> what you get, man. <laughs> so now you are looking forward to Birds of Prey. I swear, you two are so wishy-washy. Sugar, do 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 do. Ah, uh, honey, honey, do 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 do. You are my candy girl, and you got me wanting you. That's that's it. I only do the beginning parts of the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going into like verses and shit. Um, if you can't guess by the song, that is the 1969 hit "Sugar Sugar" by the Archies. Which, until looking that up right before we started recording this, I did not know that that came from the fucking Archie Bunker comedy hour. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought that it was just a song by the band. I didn't know that it was part of like a Scooby-Doo cartoon <laughs> show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but that movie, that, that song is from 1969, which this movie takes place in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, before we get started... Um, if you haven't listened to one of our reviews before, normally we do a mullet style where it's non-spoilers in the front and spoilers at the back. But this movie is out on DVD at this point, so I feel like it's probably safe to go ahead and do spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, I would suggest you go and watch it. If you don't care about spoilers, go ahead, sit back, relax, and listen, because we're going to be going into full spoilers. Um, first and foremost, uh, I want to I want to try something different. Okay. Okay. Um, first I should probably tell people who we are, huh? Probably. Yeah, huh? <laughs> um, as usual, I'm your host, Mike C Squared, and with me is the lovely A Train. What up? What it do, bitch? What it do? <laughs> and we're going to try something different this week. I want you to describe the movie to me in one word. Hmm. <clears throat> Confusing. Okay, okay. I would say feet. <laughs> Tarantino. Right, right. So um, I, I want to start out by saying that 
Quentin Tarantino has made like some of my favorite movies, like of all time. Um, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, both the Kill Bill movies. I I, I like most of the things that he's put out. Um, he really excels at dialogue and tension and weaving like an entertaining story. This film, unfortunately, is not one of them. No. <laughs> um, I'm I'm not even gonna hide the ball. I don't think either one of us cared for this movie at all. Um, Mm-mm. I I was really disappointed. I'm not gonna lie, because we were both looking forward to it. I was really excited to see this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You were. You were. Um. So I I, I want to start with the things that we liked first. Um. I like the costume and the set design um i think it all looks gorgeous um it captures that late 60s early 70s vibe um the hair um the clothes like uh, so much so to where i want that leather jacket that leo was wearing that brown (laughs) one that he had i was like that shit was fly as hell um uh i i I, the, the the cars the building the music it was all awesome like it made me want you know to had been alive in that time not really because i'd be old as shit now but <laughs> still you know I, i'm like that 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 seemed like that would have been a cool time to have been alive uh and apparently white too because i didn't see any black people in this movie that is one other thing that i did like there was no in bombs i'm pretty certain yeah they didn't drop not one in bomb i the think there movie. was one maybe probably one. no he made a racist comment yeah okay okay i was gonna say i'm like i was i was fully expecting the in bomb to drop but <laughs> like, no no he didn't uh, I, I also think that the camaraderie between the two leads is good. Um, Leo and Brad, they play off each other really well. Um, I was actually really surprised at how much I like seeing them on screen together. Uh, the color- Have they ever done a movie together? Not that I know of. No, oh, okay. I think this is the first time. Yeah. I, as far as I know, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, yeah. Um, I think that the color palette is really vibrant, and there's some really good crane shots, especially one at the end where uh, I think it's really well done. It goes like it follows uh, Leo and the neighbor uh, Roman Polanski like through the driveway, and it cranes like over the trees and uh, like into the backyard and behind the house, and finally settles before like the end title comes up for the name of the movie. I thought that that was that was really well done as well. Okay, so what about you? What what did you like? Same as you. Like I liked Brad and Leo's interactions mm-hmm. together. Yeah. I kind of liked the story plot. Kinda. Okay. Like if they would have kind of kept on track with it mm-hmm. and actually went somewhere with it, it would have been good. Okay. Um. But other than that, that's about <clears throat> it. Yeah, that that's that's what I said is pretty much what I got uh, out of what I liked. <laughs> <laughs> which 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 is which is sad because like I said, it's it's not a horrible fucking movie. It's but it, it definitely has a multitude of issues. Um, I feel like what we saw in the trailer versus is what the movie was actually about was mm-hmm. like two completely different things. Yes, yes. Like no, the yeah. trailer was really misleading. Yeah, it well, well, you know, it's it's a trailer and it's cut together to make it have more energy and like the pace moves and it seems a bit more fun. Like, don't get me wrong, there's some fun moments in this, but it's so <sighs> monotone. Yeah, for the most part, it's like the 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 story is just like a crawl, man, and like it's 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 difficult to to. It explains. So let me try and like get 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 it categorized in some kind of way. Like so, as far as like everything that we didn't like, um, some have described this movie. I said this on Twitter too. Uh, after I saw it, as um Tarantino's uh at his best, I would say that this is him at his most self indulgent and pretentious. Um. Now I I said this with the the one word to describe the movie, mm-hmm. and I told you this when we were watching it. Like Quentin, uh, and if I say QT, I'm referring yeah. to Quentin Tarantino. QT has um uh, a foot fetish, <laughs> and I told you this when we were watching it because there are 
like I, I mean, look, you saw it. I mean, mm-hmm. come on, like the the man loves him some feet. I mean, there is no less than five prolonged scenes of women's feet, either in shoes or barefoot, them walking or just like putting them up in the car window with the calluses on them and everything dirty and shit um hanging them out the window on the movie theater seats just you know looking at them you know on the ground there's just so many shots where it's just like lingering on feet or the feet are like right in the foreground of the shot like when they're in the car together when he picks up the girl brad her feet on the windshield is the foreground and them their conversation, which is supposed to be the important thing, is in the background. The but feet all you can f- see is like the callus feet. on her feet and dirt. That's and shit. all you can pay attention to. And I get to. it. It's the sixties, you know, the hippies and shit. They walked around barefoot a lot of time. I I totally understand. But it was like, come on, man. Like, duh, like I I don't I don't need you to jerk your fucking dick off while you making the movie. Like, just like. I guess I guess I can't complain. It was either going to be that or a bunch of in bombs. So because <laughs> when I when we were watching this and I asked you what the movie was about, uh-huh. what did you say? I told you that it was about the Manson murders. No, you said something completely different. You said it was Quentin Tarantino jacking his dick off to like oh old Hollywood and yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the man to murder scene, you, you had asked me something else, like, what was with those kids and some shit like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Like, and this, I was explaining it. They were part of his cult and that this is supposed to be about that. Yeah. But, yeah. No, no, no. And, and I stand by what I said. This is Quentin Tarantino just jerking his dick off to old Hollywood. That's because, I mean, he that's his shtick. That's his thing. That's his the whole directing style comes out of the way that they used to make movies back in the day and all that shit. So, uh most of the film is is it's just it's so fucking boring man like okay qt's films are usually a slow burn like pulp fiction is a slow burn you know there's story elements that are happening and things are developing but it's not like some car chases and motherfuckers jumping out the windows and having a you know karate fight with knives and shit like that like it, he don't make movies like that you know his movies are a lot of the time you know people having a conversation or some shit like that. Like, Kill Bill and Django are kind of like the exceptions. I mean, he does make violent movies, yeah, but, like, big, bombastic, you know, shit like that. Like, usually not so much. Like, Kill Bill was probably, like, the biggest action-packed movie he's probably Mm -hmm. ever made. That I know of, at least. Um, I've never seen Glorious Bastards, so maybe that one could be a contender as well. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm used to his movies kind of being like a slow burn, but Jesus, like this shit is like a crawl, man. (laughs) I mean, in most cases I can get by like on the dialogue, like that whole scene in Pulp Fiction where, uh, Sam Jackson is Jules is talking to the dude about, uh, his fucking burger and drink and the, the Bible verse and, and, and all that shit. And why you trying to fuck, uh, Marcellus Wallace like a bitch, like all that is awesome. Nothing in that moment. I mean, he's building tension and stuff like that. But as far as like the importance of the overall story, that one particular scene isn't that big of a deal per se until after he tries to shoot them and they don't get shot. And then Mm -hmm. that carries on for the rest of it because he's all like, oh, you know, I found God. Like, I don't want to be an assassin no more and all this shit. But I mean, you know, in, in, in that moment, I can get by on the not a lot of development as far as the story goes because the dialogue is so good because it's funny or it's witty and smart and stuff like that this don't have that <laughs> like the the only d- bit of dialogue exchange that i liked was when brad pitt realizes the kids are from the ranch mm-hmm. and he's like oh i remember you he was like what was your name just that and the other rex yeah um um uh she called him uh or no, yeah, he said Rex. Yeah, yeah, he was like, no, no, no. Um, it was something dumber than that. Tex. Yeah, yeah, he was like, he's like, yeah, Tex, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm the devil, and I'm here to, uh, to do the devil's work. And yeah, then that's when he sends the dog to kill him and all that shit. But th- that was like the 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 kind of stuff the movie i think was missing Mm -hmm. you know is is just funny little dialogue moments like that i mean they have some stuff with al pacino and leo at the beginning when he's talking about how you know he's kind of 
you know, becoming uh, typecasted as like the villain in all these shows and his career is going down the toilet and shit like that. I don't know. What, what, what about you? Like what dialogue wise, like what did you think? I thought it was pretty boring. <laughs> she said it was bullshit. <laughs> it was. Like you said, I feel like it could have used a lot more humor and comedy in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel like that's what kind of movie it should have been. Yeah, well, because, yeah, like you said in the trailer, it looks so fun and funny. And yeah. they, you know, got Leo doing a little dance mm-hmm. and shit. And they riding around in cars. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be cool. No. No. <laughs> no. And, and all those things are in the movie. Just completely different context. But, yeah, it feels like, 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 like somebody who directed the episode of Family Guy made the movie. Because they have all these, like like flashback cuts where they'll be talking about something and then they'll cut back to that thing. You know, where, when, um, um, when they're talking to Leo, uh, the other actor on the show that he's on and he's like, Oh, weren't you going to be in a easy rider and this, that, and the other. And he's like, Oh yeah, but you know, Steve McQueen got the part and blah, blah, blah. But they keep cutting to Leo in, you know, the movie, which he never was in the movie, but it's like, it was, kind of jarring too because i'm like well why are they showing this because he was never actually in the movie so i don't know i'm like all right whatever <laughs> um i i look with with, with like a runtime of like two hours and 40 minutes like the last 15 minutes of this is the best part of the whole movie and not just because um there's like action and people dying and shit but because this dialogue log and story development wise, most of the important things that happen in the movie happens in that last 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, it, I was kind of taken aback at what he decided to do with the story because he's basically rewriting history like again. Cause he did the same thing with, um, in, in, in glorious bastards where he has the, the Americans end up, you know, the allied forces kill Hitler, which is not how the war ends, but, uh, which is fine, I guess, but it was just, it was nice to see the would be killers get their just desserts because the whole time, you know, in the movie up till that point, they have like little time cards where it'll say, Oh, this was, you know, August 8th, 1969 and September, whatever. And, you know, then we get to that final night at towards the end and it's like 7.45 a.m. Yeah. It's like 12, you know, p.m., like 1.47 p.m. And it's like, oh, shit, the countdown's coming now. And I'm, I'm like dreading it. And you see Sharon Tate and she's pregnant and it's like, oh, shit, you know, and because, you know, I know what really happens. I'm like, you know, here's where the tension of the movie is finally coming in. And I'm like, OK, now it, we're getting to that point, like it's going to go down. They're going to die. Those kids are going to murder all these people. And then when it doesn't happen, I was like, Oh, okay. Like the moment the dog grabs the kid's arm, I was like, Whoa, what the fuck? Cause I'm like, this, this is not none of this. Cause I read a whole Wikipedia article about like the crime scene and like what was reported and mm-hmm. how it all went down. And you know, some of the shit that they did and said to them. And I'm like, wait, this is, Leo and Brad's characters are fictional characters. Like they weren't actually in the situation at all, which was fine. I figured that they were going to be the window into the actual real life murder. But once the kids go to their house, instead of Sharon Tate's house, I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm lost now. (laughs) What's what's happening? And, and I mean, like, 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 what did you think? Like, like, do you think that, that's disrespectful to like the people who were killed or the families of the people who were killed in any kind of way by taking using a real life thing that happened as a backdrop for a fictional story probably in a way but in another way since it is a fictional movie Maybe it's Whoa. better. Well, yeah, but we didn't know it was going to no. be a fix, completely fictional until but, the end. Yeah. But um, since it was a movie like this, it's probably better that they didn't go that way because what if they would have been disrespectful or yeah, yeah. said something? It could have upset these people's families. Yeah. No, so. that's true. And I wonder if he talked to any of them or like got the okay from them or let them know what he was going to be doing with the story. You know, because it, it would have been nice to have Sharon Tate 
herself be the one and then people who were actually murdered be the ones to had taking you know the upper hand against the killers and stuff instead of having two made up characters who didn't exist in the situation at all do it but, yeah you know whatever um i mean look don't, don't get me wrong i'm not complaining i would have watched a whole two-hour movie of him just bashing <laughs> that bitch head in and setting that bitch on fire in the pool and the dog that was the best that part when off. he goes like, and grabs the fire blaster or whatever the the fire but you said that in the movie <laughs> He was like, what is that? The fire blast? I was like, the flamethrower? Yeah. He was like, yeah, that. <laughs> that was the best part. Oh, yeah. Because they had called back on it from earlier in yep. the movie. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got this in my shed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that was another one of them, like, family guy cut back to moments when, like, they're talking about that movie. And he's like, ah, oh, die, you Nazi bastards. And he's all burning them and shit. And it was just like, well, that was a random cut back yeah. there. Like, all right. Uh, I... It, Margot Robbie, she she plays Sharon Tate in the movie, and I honestly feel like she was completely wasted in this, and I honestly don't know why she agreed to make this movie, because she was barely in it. Like, she she barely has any actual speaking lines. Most of the time that she, most of her screen time revolves around her watching her own movie in that Mm -hmm. theater and riding around in cars. Yeah. With her hair blowing in the wind and shit. That, that's about all she does in the whole movie. And like the last 15 minutes where she's getting ready to go to bed. Right. <laughs> right. Where you're thinking, oh shit, she finna die. Yeah. Where it's like, in reality, it's like, nope. No. Oh, and then she talks to Leo on the driveway at the yeah. very end. But I was just like, why even... Like, you could have cast anybody in that part if you were going to have them like literally do nothing mm-hmm. in the whole, you know, grand scheme of the story. It was just stuff like that that just frustrated me because I'm just like, what is this about then? Like, if it's not about the Sharon Tate murders per se, and if we're just going to kill the killers and stuff, it's like, well, why not have the people who were killed be the ones to do that? And, you know, I I like the the scenes between Leo and Brad, and I enjoy watching them together. But what the fuck is the movie about, man? (laughs) Like, 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 what are we doing, man? Like, Like, we're just... Talking about Hollywood and three shit. hours. Yeah, man. And for it to be two hours and 40 some odd minutes, man, like that shit was no, hell no. Like you could have shaved that whole 40 minutes off of that shit and just made it a two Because we took hours. a little break in between. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And we could have taken a longer break. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. Right. Uh, I, I, I know QT loves old Hollywood and he loves like campy filmmaking and, and that's his whole shtick and that's fine. But, like, tell me a goddamn story next time. Like, don't waste two hours waxing about the inner workings of actors' career choices and the politics of movie casting and all that shit. Like, I I, I don't care about that. Didn't have, like, 25 minutes staring at bitches' feet and hairy-ass armpits and shit. And then the last 15 minutes, you actually doing something interesting with the story. Like, All in all, I I feel that the movie is a really big disappointment because we were both looking forward to this and I feel like we were misled to think that it was advertised to be something that it wasn't and the end result was really self-indulgent, pretentious, boring, and kind of a waste of time. I'm not saying it's a horrible movie, but... I would not suggest anybody see it unless you just really, really, really love Hollywood. Be drunk or in no, some kind no, of intoxicated. No, don't, because you'll fall asleep on this shit. No, don't, because it's, it's boring as shit. Um, now, do, do you have any other final thoughts on this before we wrap it up? Not really. She was like, I'm, I'm sick of even talking about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so... um. If you haven't listened to one of these before, uh, we have a five-tier rating system. Uh, H-Rain, go ahead and explain to the people how we rate. It goes, liked it, really fucking liked it, meh, hated it, and really fucking hated it. Mm -hmm. You did that. I did it backwards. backwards. Oh, well, those are all the ratings. Yep. (laughs) Y'all get what I'm saying. Right. Okay. So for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, A-Train, what would you give this? Probably say hated it. Damn. You know, I'm pretty much right there with you. I'm going to go between a meh and a hated it, though. I was kind of there, too. Because but... there, there's some things about it that I did enjoy, and there are some fun moments in the movie. But overall, I did think it was kind of a waste of time. I was going to say, would I watch it again? 
No. No, no. And we almost, almost went to theaters and Almost. Seen it. I'm so glad we and, did it. Yeah, I am so happy that we did not go to the theaters. The only and see good this. thing about probably seeing it in theaters would have been the popcorn. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, other than that, um, I, I can't. Or unless you're just a really, really, really big Quentin Tarantino fan, then you may like it. But honestly, I feel like this is one of his weakest um, entries in, in his filmography, personally. But all right. Thanks for listening to one of our reviews once again. And we will see you guys next time. Tell the people bye, A-Train. Bye. All right. But that is it for the show. Remember, you can always find us at our home, one giant leap for geeks.lipson.com. We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or really anywhere else you can get your podcast. Now make sure to take your little fingers and show us some love. So go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, give us a rating, follow us, review us, and all that shit. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, criticisms, you just want to say hi, you'd like to, you know, chat us up a little, uh, you can email us at officialoglfg at gmail.com. You can also find us as a show on Twitter at Giant Leap the Number Four Geeks. Um, myself, DJ Millimill, I am on Twitter at Froggy Beaver. If you at me and I don't get back to you, I'm sorry. I still have yet to master Twitter. Um, if you want to find the show, we are on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram. Really, all you have to do is search for One Giant Leap for Geeks somewhere on the internet and you'll probably find us. All right. Thanks. You guys have a good night. Bye.